morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and doing great. My name is Deepak, and today we are going to talk about ethical hacking using Carling Linux. So I hope that you are really going to enjoy this uh, webinar, and you are going to learn a lot. This is the agenda for today. We are going to talk about uh, the basics of hacking. What is ethical hacking? What is security threat? What is Kali Linux and the skill set that you require to become the ethical hacker and the hands on. So let's get started. The first topic to, for today, which is like basics of hacking. So let's understand first of all what exactly is a hacking because most of the time people basically get confused here. You know uh, what is hacking? So let's understand what exactly is the hacking. So hacking basically means that you can say it's an act or it's an arc wherein it's a way of finding the vulnerabilities in your system and systematically exploiting them so you are going to find the bugs and vulnerability in the system and then you are going to exploit those vulnerabilities now this hacking is basically classified into two parts which is most of only people get confused people say that i want to become a hacker i want to hack the websites and make the money that's not a uh, you know ha uh, ethical hack hacking out of two types ethical and unethical so in general, if like I said, hacking basically means that to find the vulnerabilities and bugs in the system and then exploiting those vulnerabilities and bugs. In the case of ethical hacking, what you do is you basically find the vulnerabilities, uh, uh, find the bugs with the consent of the person. Like for example, I have my website, I'm giving you the permission. You can find the vulnerabilities exploit on my system. You can try to break my environment. With my consent, you're doing it just to find the weakness, but you can fix it. Before that, any other, uh, other person, any other, uh, let's say unethical hacker will try to break the security and will try to take advantage of it the hacking you want to do basically with someone's permission that's what is ethical hacking unethical hacking basically means that without their permission without the consent you are trying to find some uh, you know bugs and vulnerabilities and you are basically exploiting them for your own benefits if, if in the moment if you're going to get caught or uh, you know i mean uh, basically let's say someone is able to identify you then in that case uh, you know you can be heavily fined uh, you can go behind the bars as well. Company can file a lawsuit against you as well. So many things can happen. So that's unethical hacking. So the thing that you are going to learn is not unethical hacking. Okay. So this is again a small example with uh, you know with small guys in the hats, which are the hackers actually. Okay. So let's talk about you know basics of ethical hacking. So I hope you got a fair understanding what is ethical hacking. So if I had to uh, define, you can say that ethical hacking. It's basically a hacking in which you are going to find the bugs and vulnerabilities by someone's consent. So in this case, you know, you are going to, this is going to be legal activity since you're going to, uh, you know, ask from someone's consent. And since the ethical hacker is going to take the permission prior to the hacking into the system, it is legally from every aspect. And uh, you have to make sure that you are not injecting any malicious uh, content into it. Now, let's understand what are the goals of ethical hacking. There are various goals. The first goal of the ethical hacking is to protect the privacy of the organization being hacked. So wherein you are going to see that what are the weak areas that you have in your organization, you have to protect yourself from that. And once you are basically protected, uh, you are going to make the environment more strong. So in other words, you have to find the issues and the vulnerabilities and the bugs first before a hacker can identify and he can basically try to take advantage of those bugs and vulnerabilities. Next one is you have to basically transparently report all the weakness to everyone. So whosoever it is, let's say you found some weakness, which occur due to uh, you know any uh, network team. So let's say you found some vulnerabilities, you know, which are basically handled by some VP of the let's say a network team or maybe VP of your IT department. So you have to basically report all the vulnerabilities. You have to be very transparent with the report that you found, and you have to present the data to them and also help them to fix those vulnerabilities. The last one is you have to inform all the also the hardware and software vendors for the vulnerabilities. And let's say the organization is using some software our organization is using some hardware you found some vulnerabilities some bugs some issues some flaws so you have to basically uh, you know inform those hardware vendors or software vendors for whom you are using the solution and they have to fix those bugs either by a patch or by giving you a latest hardware so that uh, you know no one can compromise your environment so these are the major goals of the ethical hacking now why ethical hacking because your information is valuable we are not going to pay attention if someone is able to get access of your data that in that case he can basically compromise your environment and he can basically access entire data he can put it on the dark web and he can make a lot of money at the same time it can spoil the name and fame of your organization so you have to make sure that you are with the help of ethical hacking you are finding the weakness first before you are going to you know someone else can exploit them so you find the weakness first 
uh, close the door for vulnerabilities and then uh, you are going to uh, you know uh, perform all those kind of things like for example you are going to make sure that you have applied proper patches you are going to make sure that you have uh, we are performing a system hardening you are making sure that there are no open uh, ports due to which any other person can try to access your networks like, like there is a huge discussion for this so in, in a nutshell you just have to make sure that all the doors to the vulnerabilities are basically being closed clear yeah? so this was basically ethical hacking now let's take a look and uh, understand structured learning at Eureka. so if you want to dive in more detail like i said this is not a course this is a 27 hour course so this is just a glimpse of it if you are planning to take a course from Eureka, so this is going to be your journey you are going to start with uh, introduction to cyber security and ethical hacking that's going to be the first step then you're going to perform a hands-on on it after that you're going to learn cryptography cryptography basically is a greek term which means secret writing you are going to learn all the components of it are different algorithms uh, they are working in everything so like symmetric asymmetric algorithm rsl algorithm the algorithm that you use in your whatsapp your uh, bit locker and all this kind of stuff and the hands-on then you're going to learn about computer networks and what are different type of networks you have and how you can provide security on the computer networks and the hands-on on it then you're going to learn about application what is application what is web how you can basically provide security on it and the hands-on then you're going to learn about iam which is identity and access management how basically you can provide the password policies how you can restrict the users and the hands-on on it then you're going to learn about which is uh, VA and uh, you know uh, penetration testing, which is vulnerability analysis, penetration testing, and system hacking, and the hands-on on it. You are going to learn about then sniffing a SQL injection with demos as well. How you can basically perform SQL injection automatically, how you can perform SQL injection manually, and the hands-on on it. Then you are going to learn about DOS and session hijacking. Then basically, what exactly is DOS? DOS basically means denial of service, which means that yeah, if you are the you know authorized user, you will not be able to you know access the uh, you know um, data because the site was down. How the DOS uh, attack can happen, the different techniques of it and all, and uh, session hijacking, and hands on on it. And then you are going to become a superhero like this. You are going to have a cape. <laughs> okay, just kidding actually. So that's the way you know the course is actually designed, and we are going to deep in dive in more detail. And for each and everything, we have the practicals here. Okay, let's move on. So, what exactly is security threat? So, basically, security threat you can say any risk which can potentially harm a computer system or digital system is known as security threat. So, it basically is of two type: physical threat and non-physical threat. Physical threat basically you can say it's like your internal, external, or human. Non-physical threats are your worm, virus, trojan, and spywares. So physical threats, like for example, someone is uh, you know working in your organization and uh, he is uh, you know working on with someone else as with your competitor, he is leaking your data. Or external from someone outside is trying to compromise your environment. Someone is trying to spoof his ident uh, identity. Let's say a person who is a hacker, he he has uh, spoofed his identity and is looking like a plumber. He came at your premises just to uh, maybe fix certain things out, but actually he, he came to leak your data. Non-physical threats like your bombs, virus, trojans, spywares are the non-physical threats like uh, with the help of ransomware, also it can be exploited there with various ways. Now, uh, the preventive measures for these uh, non-physical threats, for example, there are various uh, preventive measures. So your organization must make sure that you have logical security uh, maintained in place you have proper the firewalls you basically have proper authentication devices you, you should use multi-factor authentication and at the same time uh, you know your organization is using maybe like biometric smart card you should use ids ips techniques properly so these are the preventive measures now what is the kali linux that's something we are going to talk about today so kali linux is basically a debian based linux distribution operating system which is for penetration testing security auditing so it basically contains various tools for information you know security tasks like security research computer forensic reverse engineering penetration testing so it basically have all the built in tools you don't have to worry about you don't have to go here and there all the tools are going to be inbuilt automatically in this and i'm going to show you this in practically as well why you basically use kali linux uh, it basically has various uh, features so it means as free as uh, it can get. So basically, Kali Linux have been always free to use. There is no need to pay any kind of extra cost for it. No license involved. It's free of cost. 
next is more tools that are uh, more tools than you could think of so car linux comes with over 600 uh, penetration testing and security analysis ready to third is basically open source so being a member of this linux family uh, it's basically open source so you can basically customize the code uh, it's also publicly uh, available on the github and all the code is available for your tweaking purpose you want to make modifications you can you want to make some kind of customization you are allowed to do it next is multi-language support so Kali linux basically include multi-language support which basically allow users to operate their native language and locate the tools they need for the job and last one is completely customizable since this is an open source and uh, uh, you know this is used by developers at offensive security uh, you know to understand the different uh, components sometimes to replicate the scenario sometimes to find the weakness in the system so linux is uh, you know always their like first preference and Kali linux is always the first preference of any ethical hacker and why because uh, like i said it was uh, already have all the tools installed you don't have to waste so much time installing the tools it, it has tools for everything and, and you know uh, they're in your operating system so you spin up the uh, system and you get all the things automatically over there now what are uh, the system requirement of kali linux so kali linux is basically supported on your i3 processor amd processor arm processor as well so uh, the minimum requirement you need is minimum 20 gig of hard drive and uh, you know uh, minimum one gig of ram uh, i mean uh, you can have two gig or more as well but at least one gig has to be there you can uh, deploy this on your virtual machine like in my case i have deployed on my virtual box that i'm going to show you shortly so you can have on the virtual environment as well so what are different tools with Kali linux there are so many tools like nessus wireshark aircrack ng nmap thc hydra we have so many tools now if you talk about the skills of ethical hacking uh, you know, I mean, uh, you basically have programming. Uh, you should have basically good knowledge in programming language like HTML, Python, Java, you know, Bash and all. You should have in-depth knowledge of operating system if you want to become a good ethical hacker because uh, when you're going to perform ethical hacking, it's not like that you're going to perform ethical hacking on Windows. You should maybe be performing on ethical hacking on Windows, Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu, uh, you know, maybe Mac and uh, Fedora, so many OS. And along with that, you should have a you know good networking knowledge as well because sometimes you have to basically exploit the you know user's environment. So user's environment can be uh, let's say integrated with a different platform uh, which is having a network connectivity somewhere. Sometimes you have to understand the network trace, how the data is flowing between two components, all that kind of stuff you have to understand. So that basically comes under this. Okay, let me show you practical. So this is basically my uh, virtual machine. I have Windows 10 box on which I have built this. Kali Linux virtual machine. So this is my virtual machine here. So let's just uh, bring this guy on. Okay, let's fix this error out so that uh, you guys can access virtual machine. Let me fix it out. I pause my screen for a minute so that I can fix the error out. Okay, it should be good now. So let's start the virtual machine here. And it's going to open shortly now. And this is my configuration, which is basically I have allocated created 17 gb of ram to my virtual machine it's going to come up so it's going to come up again in a moment so depending on the space depending on the configuration that you have on your laptop you can configure as many as virtual machines you want it's not going to restrict you on that so it gives you a full fledged flexibility So here's our uh, Kalinus machine. You know, uh, if you basically are uh, talking about uh, what all tools are there, you know, in uh, Kalinus machine, basically. So if you for every single thing you have a tool, like for information gathering, you have a tool. For vulnerability analysis, you have a tool. Verification analysis, you have a tool. Database assessment, you have a tool. For all the different different things, you will be able to see the tools here and there. Now here in this case, let's say, uh, you know, I mean, uh, let me show you the one thing. So you can write the uh, different different codes if you want. So if you basically want to write the code uh, for like using Python and everything, you can. But you, being a good ethical hacker, uh, you should basically have a knowledge in different different components. Because what exactly happens is, let's say you know you have to basically compromise someone else's environment. Let's say there is a there is an environment you know which is built on uh, maybe some some security codes uh, which are written in Java. So if you don't have a good knowledge in Java, it's going to be you know problematic for you. So you should basically have a good knowledge in different uh, fields, different technologies. So whenever the you know the opportunity comes when you have to basically exploit some someone's system, you can basically do it. 
this is not basically i'm talking about an ethical hacking don't think like that uh, i have to become an ethical hacker then i will be able to do it not really this is something from an ethical hacking perspective because you should basically have the good knowledge in all the areas all the fields because you don't know being an ethical hacker you have to become the you know the top in the ladder the person basically who can try to break the security of everything so uh, you know and the reason why you have to do is not from the offensive perspective like not from a defensive perspective the major thing is that you have to do just to find the weakness so that all the people who are part of your organization basically can help you you know making your uh, organization more secure because if your organization is going to be compromised it's going to compromise everything right so that's the thing that you have to do now let's do a small uh, practical demonstration i have a code written so let me show you and uh, let me just uh, you know perform encryption and decryption and let me just maximize my screen so i have a code written in aes uh, for aes algorithm with the help of which we are going to perform encryption and decryption let's say i want to encrypt the data my message is hi i am deepak and my password is deepak now this is my cipher test i can send this cipher test to the receiver and once the receiver is going to get it now what you have to do is uh, you know you are going to send this data basically to receiver receiver is going to decode this in order to decrypt the data he ha what he's going to do is he's going to enter the message which is going to be decrypted and he's going to provide the password which is basically your key so password in this case is going to be deepak and you are going to get the same plain text message back so that's basically it's the code like if you want to take a look at the you know the code that basically is the code at that simple code basically i have written what i'm doing basically is i have imported the aes library i'm taking again a block size so this is again a you know algorithm structure so in the course we basically explain the algorithm as well so when i'm using the there are different uh, modes of operation in which uh, it can run so i'm using cbc block of operation i'm using iv iv basically stands for initialization vector and i'm using a sha 2 for six hash algorithm and i'm combining i'm producing the encrypted data yeah so that was uh, guys all about today we can wrap up the session for today i hope that you have really enjoyed the today's session and uh, it's an immense pleasure to meet all of you guys thank you for your time guys